Research Incorporated. This is a school. It is not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organizations. This school is a non-profit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our elephant, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity until this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given unto our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were later incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. Since that time, branch schools have been established throughout the United States in various parts of the world. The Tampa branch was established in the year of 1996. At this time, I'd like to introduce to you the Dean of the State of Florida, Dr. Jimmy Clark, and the President of the State of Florida, Dr. Ricky Clark. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title for our Heavenly Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit as was contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. This name has been improperly substituted by the Lord. The true title for the Word or Son is Elohim. This title has been improperly substituted by God. The true name for the Holy Spirit, whether manifest in or out of a physical body, is Yahshua. This name has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Now, Lord and God are both titles. They are not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 85 that there are Lord's many and there are God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title. But unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. Meaning that Elohim is the title that our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia will prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language has any letter or character in their alphabet that will produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1,600 years after the death of the Messiah. Therefore, making such names as Jesus and Jehovah impossible, untrue renderings for the correct name of our Heavenly Father and His Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Now, Yahweh is spirit. And in this state of existence, he's inscrutable and incomprehensible. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of all and everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state, symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this orange and yellow fiery colored cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you how that everything on the chart abides within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the sum total of the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh knowing mankind could not perceive of him in this state, he purposed right within himself to take on shape and form as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being, that is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifest himself in a physical body and walk the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the whole world erroneously calls Jesus Christ. Now there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. 
So the simple yet intelligent question we should all ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and this title can be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. In this school, we also teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel up out of the land of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him this threefold tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh later instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The tabernacle pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. Three principal compartments yet making up the one tabernacle pattern. We go on to show proof how that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and how that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. We have ten primary constitutional aims and objectives of our institute and they are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or the so-called law of nature and the powers laid in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstitions, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eight is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained. There is none other name given among men, or by man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Intent is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of a mortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace. Our slogan is to speak the truth. I take this morning's lecture with a prayer to be given by Dr. Juanita Isaac of the Pompano Beach Branch. Our scripture will be Acts, the second chapter, to be read by Dr. Shante Riley of the Orlando Branch. Our first speaker for this afternoon's lecture will be the Dean of the Orlando Branch, Dr. Dennis Allen. Just kidding. <laughs> Our first speaker for this afternoon's lecture will be Dr. Rebecca Fleming, Dean of the Quincy Branch. <laughs> important 
It's like, when he called my name, I was like, my heart is beating fast. And that's one of the things that here, that he made me He's a man made in the image of Elohim by the pattern of the tabernacle. The tabernacle pattern, which consists of the most holy place, a holy place in the court round the back. The tabernacle of man, and here, Man made by the pattern. Most holy place, holy place in the court from the top. Okay, get for me Isaiah 8 and 20. Isaiah 8 and 20. To the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Okay. To the law and to the testimony. So, for our first time visitors, we start at the law, which is Genesis foundation 
You have to go to the law and to the prophets. Okay? Give for me uh, 1 Corinthians 15 and 1. 1 Corinthians, excuse me, 1 Corinthians 15 and 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. Now this is a puzzle Paul. He's telling you what the gospel is. The gospel equals the good news. He tells us to the law and to the prophets. Okay? And he tells us that read that for me again. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. He's declaring to you. I, he's telling you what the gospel is. The gospel equals the good news. Which I preached unto you, which also ye have received. And which you received it. And wherein ye stand. You have to stand in it. By which also ye are saved. Okay. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Okay. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. How? That Yahshua died for our sins according to the scriptures. Now how did Yahshua die for our sins according to the scriptures? And then read on. And that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Remember this according to the scriptures. Remember we talked about what the scripture was to the law and to the prophets. Okay. Uh, Yahshua here <coughs> there's a death a bearer and a resurrection and that's talking about the gospel so we have the death bearer Resurrection. Third, and it's witness if you can get many witnesses. First John five and seven. For there are three that bear witness. I'm sorry. For there are three that bear witness in heaven. The Father. Five and seven. Thank you. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father. The Word and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in the earth, the spirit, and the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. Now we were saying this song about what a, a unity. Okay? And we sang this song about be patient with me. <coughs> so the gospel is good news. And it's talking about the blood, water, spirit, 40. Death, burial, resurrection, third. So here you have the death. You go along with blood, burial, water, and spirit for you. Death, burial, resurrection. Blood, water, spirit for you. Okay? Now when we begin at Moses, the first five books of the Bible. That's your law books. Remember that. And he tells us to take the natural to point to the spiritual, to learn something about your freedom. And he was an instructor. He was, they called him rabbi, which means teacher. And, and that's where we come. We want eternal life. 
and peace, joy, and happiness. And we can know that the divine I pray. Here we begin at Moses. And if you can get for me, uh, well, uh, first get for me a uh, Bethel. Now, Rebecca had a question. He wanted to know all the things that was happening. And he had a question. Read on. Second verse. And Yahweh answered me and said, write the vision. And he had this question, all that was going on around him. The wickedness that was going on. And it wasn't to say the other countries, this was going on right there with Israel. And he said, He'll stand on his watch, read on. And Yahweh answered me and said, Write the vision. Now, that is what we have to remember. <laughs> We're teaching the divine vision of Revelation. And he told her back that he's told him to write the vision. And make it plain upon tables. Make it plain so you can understand it. That he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. It's for an appointed time. But at the end, it shall speak and it's not lie. It shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It, it will not tarry. It will surely come and not tarry. Okay? So we have here the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection. Third, blood, water, spirit, 40, which the gospel equals the good news. Okay? And here we have all of these different charts. And they're here for illustration for us to, to be able to see like different learners. They can hear me talking, but it's like also visual learners. They can see. They help learn about this great vision and revelation. Okay. So here on this chart, this is called the mosaic chart. You have the Ayahasha Hydra, and I talked about man made in the Likeness of Yahweh, the tabernacle pattern. Man made the image of Elohim by the pattern of the tabernacle. Okay? And as the moderator had gone over to us to help you find and know Yahweh as he really is and actually exists. That's what about aims, main aims, okay? And here, he tells us beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he found to us in Luke 24 25. Okay. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Uh, not the Messiah to accept these things and to enter into his glory. Mm -hmm. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures 
the things concerning himself. Okay. Concerning who? Moses? Concerning him. Okay. And that's what we come to learn about because that's eternal life to us. Here for me, um, I'm going to begin back here at Moses with uh, Would you like Psalms 103 and 7? Uh, yes. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. Okay, he made known his ways to Moses and acted to the children of Israel. Okay, go ahead and um, Understanding 
that we may know him that is true and we are in him that is true even in his son Yahshua the Messiah this is the true El and eternal life little children keep yourselves from idols okay and that That's what we found as we know that, that he could live a eternal life. Thank you. Our next speaker for this afternoon's lecture will be Dr. Dennis Allen Dean of the Orlando Branch. And this pattern dictates everything. 
how the man's physical body is made, how the man's physical body is structured, how it operates, all that. And it's dictated by a pattern. Now the pattern is truly Yahweh element. So now, as we, as we go on, and what we come to find out is that we use terms in this class. And we talk about uh, things we call types. Uh, we talk about shadows. Uh, and, and for those that may have not used those terms prior to coming down to these schools and haven't heard these things, terms discussed in the way that we discuss them here, um, let's take a few, uh, a few seconds here and, and grab type, the word type out of the dictionary for me, and then grab the word shadow. Um, and what we're going to come to find out is, and we just want to make assumptions that um, the listener is up to speed as to what we're talking about when we share these things. Because what we do know and understand is there is so much to talk about. There's so much to explain. There's so much that has been revealed. And Yahweh has piecemeal this knowledge and understanding to us that we might that we might see and understand. And then on top of that, you know, we've been asked, we've been asked to check things out, do your study, do your research, do your investigation. And even after that has to happen, we're still not done. Because now what the Father has to do is reveal these things in one's heart and mind, in one's consciousness, and make you see, know, and understand. So it's not just an exercise in reading the Bible, studying a pamphlet. Uh, or, or any of those type of things, these things have to be revealed in one's consciousness that you might see and understand. And the goal is to save a soul, not to become book smart or to, to be able to quote a bunch of scriptures, even though all those things are necessary to get one to see and understand. These classes are set up that one might live and that one might live eternally. That's why we come and congregate and the effort and the time is put in for those to get up and talk about these things and share them that others might see and understand. And when you walk out of the room, the goal is and the hope is that you come to the self-same conclusion that we have. The self-same conclusion of the purpose, plan, pattern, and plan of Yahweh that what his son came in to do was to save mankind from eternal damnation or from their sins. Now, prior to this knowledge and understanding, believe it or not, we were all hopelessly and utterly lost. It doesn't matter where you come from, what religious philosophy, philosophy you participated in, we were all lost, absolutely lost, until Yahweh revealed his understanding to us. Read type out of the dictionary. A person, thing, or event that represents what? That represents or symbolizes another. Now, that represents or symbolizes another. So now when we go back here, and I'm going to talk about this migration just a little bit. So now what Yahweh did, he put a group of people in bondage, talking about the children of Israel in the land of Egypt. They were subject to the Egyptians, and they were evilly entreated, or they were slaves down here in the land of Egypt, serving the king, his satanic wicked kingdom and building his treasure cities. Then what Yahweh did was he raised up Moses down in the land of Egypt and through, uh, through the gospel as has already been illustrated by the first speaker the death, burial, and resurrection had Moses resurrected out of the land of Egypt received the name of Yahweh in the third chapter of uh, Exodus and then he sent Moses back down there to deliver his one son out of the land of Egypt. And it's already been talked about in, in previous lectures how uh, Yahushua was already down here in the land of Egypt and he appeared down here some 10 years after Moses had fled out. And you read in the scripture where he talked about he heard their cries and he, and he saw them being evilly treated down in the land of Egypt. He says, I'm come down to deliver them. Now Moses comes back down there with the name of Yahweh and signs and wonders to deliver, this, deliver the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Now, you say, so what? That's 3,500 years ago. What's that got to do with me now? You see this darkness down here, and it's all the way across the chart. And once you become initiated in this teaching, what you're going to understand is you're going to see certain illustrations down here, and all of them in one manifestation or another are illustrating darkness, death, and ignorance. 
And what this is talking about is the state and condition of a man's mind or the state and condition of a soul. Your soul. Lost. Before you knew any better. Or before Yahweh revealed himself unto us. So then when we talk about a type, you got a group of people in bondage. They're dead. Spiritually and psychologically. Read type again. Stay with me. We got a roll. Taken from Oxford Languages Dictionary. Mm -hmm. A category of people or thing having common characteristics. So now, group of people, spiritually dead, in, in a type, dead and buried. You and me, in our hearts and minds and our consciousness. Dead and buried. Then a savior appears down here in the land of Egypt, then gives Moses instruction on how to deliver these people out of the heat, out of the land of Egypt, by the death of a four-legged lamb. Second definition. Mm -hmm. A person or thing symbolizing uh -huh. or exemplifying the ideal or defining characteristics of something. Of something. See, it was something, and it's almost talking about someone else. So now some fifteen hundred years. After the death of this pastoral lamb down in the land of Egypt, Yahshua the Messiah appears on the scene and does the self same thing in the reality that this lamb represented down in the land of Egypt. This lamb was slain for the deliverance of a group of people. Yahshua comes along and dies himself to save the souls of mankind. See, the blood of the lamb offered up, put on the uh, the, the, uh, the upper door post, the two side posts, different from a basin, making four points of blood on the frame of the door, on the frame of the door, on the frame of the door in the house of the uh, Israelites. Then Yahshua Messiah comes in, there's four points of blood on him, on that frame. That's right. He's dying for sin out here, being the Paschal Lamb. See, type and shadow, here comes the reality. So now you got a story back here, seemingly an insignificant story about a group of people being delivered out of bondage. Then the Savior comes in and performs the self-same thing himself to die for sin. This is what we're talking about all the way down. Just stick with us. And you're going to see these things repeated over and over and over again, zeroing in on Yahshua the Messiah. Now these self-same people, they, they pass through the divided waters of the Red Sea, following a phenomenal cloud which is typical of spirit. In the pattern, you had a brazen altar of sin sacrifice. Four horns on it that the blood, see the lamb on the altar? See the lamb down here in Egypt? The blood of the lamb placed on the door, the blood of the sacrifice placed on the four horns of the altar. The children of Israel pass through the divided waters of the Red Sea. You got a brazen labor of water here next to your pattern. You got a holy cup of anointing oil or a vessel of anointing oil which symbolizes spirit. The children of Israel migrate through the uh, divided waters of the Red Sea following a phenomenal cloud which is typical spirit. So now, you see, they're operating by a pattern and all of this takes place before they get this. See, y'all is showing that the true pattern is who? L.M. And they're migrating out of the land of Egypt by a divine Yahweh-given pattern. They get out here in the wilderness of Sinai where they got light, bread, substance, intercession out here, and you got self-same things in the tabernacle pattern. You got a, a, a seven-branch lampstand, you got a table of showbread, and you got an altar of sin sacrifice where prayers were offered daily for the intercession and the saving uh, of the group of people back there or the intercession of the children of Israel back there. All this is going on in the migration of the children of Israel. What we're talking about through the preaching of this gospel is a soul being delivered from darkness unto light. It has to be spoken. It has to be preached that one might perceive it. So the same migration that these seemingly insignificant group of people made 3,500 years ago, you're making that same migration as you sit here and see. Believe it or not. That's what's happening in these classes. There's a silent operation that's going on. And Yahweh has the power and gives the power to deliver a soul from death unto life while you're sitting here in a chair. 
That's what's happening in these schools. That's why it's important for us to congregate, to be here in these classes that this might be preached into our consciousness. Now, once we get here in the world of Sinai, a law is spoken down into their hearing. They wander around out here for a period of time, approximately 40 years. They pass through the, uh, the River Jordan on into Canaan's land, land of milk and honey, a land of plenty, a land with substance in it, houses they didn't build, flocks they hadn't hurried, crops they hadn't grown, a type of heaven just sitting there waiting for them to get there. Sound familiar? Same thing going on now. So then up here it says eternity or Jerusalem above, above this orange and fiery colored cloud is typical of Yahweh, or is, it represents Yahweh in his pure spirit state. This is Jerusalem or heaven, a place with substance and plenty, sitting there waiting to be inherited, just like Canaan's land was here. So you see a group of people move from death unto life. They're washed up, cleaned up, organized before they can inherit the kingdom. Yahshua Messiah, before he, uh, he went into his public ministry, he had to watch the noise before he could minister, just like the, the, uh, uh, the priest in the pattern. And we just don't have enough time to tell you all the stuff we've got to tell you. Three hours isn't enough, three days isn't enough, three years isn't enough. To, to be able to share and explain the things that Yahweh has shown us. Now, let's do this. I want you to get, because I started out this morning talking about the third of June. I want you to get uh, Exodus, I mean, Exodus 19 chapter, uh, Exodus 19 1. I want you to get, uh, I want you to do Deuteronomy uh, 28, 2863. I want you to grab. Uh, Deuteronomy 30 and 3. We're going to try to get a principle here. Exodus 19. Exodus 19 and 1. Read. In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day, came they into the wilderness of Sinai. Now, this is what I just talked about. The children of Israel, after, after the slaying of this land and them passing through the divided waters of the Red Sea, and them migrating 47 days to the base of Mount Sinai, they find themselves here, and it's on June the 3rd. Now, again, the first month of the year with, a up with Yahweh is April. And you read about that in Exodus 12 chapter and in Exodus 13 and 4, that in the month of April is where they uh, uh, prepare this castle lamb in the land of Egypt. That's the first month of the year that Yahweh gave the uh, children of Israel. So now, you got April, May, June. So then when we meet in Exodus 19 and 1, it says what? The third, in the third month. In the third month. When the children not March. June. In the third month. What? When the children of Israel. Ah, read it right. Third month. Does it say third month, same day? I got to it yet. Okay. In the third month. Mm -hmm. When the children of Israel will go forth out of the land of Egypt. Uh -huh. The same day. The so now we know that it's the, it's the third month and the same day, that would be June the 3rd. Like what, yesterday, they reached the base of Mount Sinai. The point is this, is that Yahweh delivered these folks from death here and brought them out here in the wilderness. He assembled them there at the base of this mountain. He gathered them, kind of like y'all gathered here this weekend. A great assembly. It's been three years and eight months since we gathered like this. Three years and eight months. Through circumstances that were beyond our control, but now we're back. And hopefully Yahweh allows us to continue to gather this way and that these weekends are profitable for us. That we come together and this gospel is preached that, you know, and I, and I say this at home all the time, is that when I come to class and when I go home from class, I want to have a feeling in my heart and mind that, man, I'm glad I went to class today. <laughs> and that's my hope and prayer for you, that when we come down here and congregate, that we walk away and say, man, I'm glad I was, I'm glad, I'm, I wasn't going, but I'm glad I went tonight. <clears throat> you know, you all have been there. 
Uh, I'm glad I went tonight because I heard something tonight that, man, I would have missed that if I didn't go. I'd have missed this weekend if I didn't go. The things I heard this weekend, you know, it, it gave me energy, it gave me life, it gave me a reason to continue on because of what I heard this weekend. That's how we should walk away from these things. Read. In the third month, when the children of Israel were going forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai, mm -hmm. for they were departed from Rephidim. There were come to the desert of Sinai, uh -huh. and had pitched in the wilderness, and there Israel encamped, excuse me, and there Israel camped before the mountain. So what we're reading about is Moses' first person trip to the mountain. And he's going to be told to tell the children of Israel to watch what they clean up for against the third day. The law is going to be spoken down into their hearing. The children of Israel are out here in an assembly, and this law is going to be spoken to them. Ten verse. Read. And Yahweh said unto Moses, uh -huh. Go unto the people, and sanctify them today and tomorrow, uh -huh. and let them wash their clothes, uh -huh. and be ready against the third day. That will be June the third. Be ready on June the sixth. Be ready the third day. For the third day, Yahweh will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. So now he got him, he's got them assembled out here in the wilderness that he might speak to them, that he might give them his law, his covenant, his ordinances. It's like a man taking a wife to be a bride. And this law or the vows is the covenant. And didn't she say, didn't she say, all that Yahweh said, I'm going to do what? I will, I'll do, and I'm going to be obedient. Now, we know the story. It ended up not going that way, but that's what, that was, that was her intentions. Till do come on, that calf, y'all going to do But her intentions were to stay married. So now, let's get Deuteronomy 28, 63. Deuteronomy 28, 63. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass that as Yahweh rejoiced over you to do you good. Now, see, oh, oh isn't it pretty? It ain't pretty when you get married. <laughs> and he rejoiced over them to do good, got a bride, had a wash up and clean up, and married her at the base of this mountain. Gave her a covenant, and she said, I do. Now, when we read Deuteronomy, read. And it shall come to pass. That as Yahweh rejoiced over you to do you good mm -hmm. and to multiply you, uh -huh. so Yahweh will rejoice over you to destroy you. Look, and to bring Yahweh you to ain't gonna miss nothing. Whether it's in it's in to rejoice to do one good or the, 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 the or, to, or he is gonna rejoice to chastise as well. He ain't gonna miss nothing. Read. Oh, Yahweh will rejoice over you to destroy you and to bring you to naught. Uh -huh. And ye shall be plucked from off the land whither thou goest to possess it. So now watch this. He brought them out here. He gathered them here. He assembled them here, them here, and gave them his covenant. But he said, now if you don't keep it, I'm going to scatter you all over the place. 64. And Yahweh shall scatter thee among all people from mm -hmm. the end of the earth, even to the other. And there shall, shall serve other Elohim, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. We gotta stay close. We gotta stay in fire. Deuteronomy 30 and 3. Deuteronomy 30 and 3. Mm -hmm. That then Yahweh thy Elohim will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee. Now watch this. And, 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 and y'all know this. Y'all know I'm not saying nothing to you. This story that we that we talk about, and all of these these Bible ethics that you see illustrated on the elevation chart. See, this is a love story. Mm -hmm. This is about a man and a bride. This is about a man and his wife, mm -hmm. and how he continually takes her back after her disobedience and her fortitude. Now. Things that probably a natural physical man wouldn't do, because when we threw, we threw. Right? Y'all know. Okay. We, we'll give you the Heisman in a minute. You know, okay? But now, but see, not with the father, see, because if he was like that, then we all would be lost. 
Okay, he might have shut this thing down. But see, no, he, he keeps he keeps coming back to her to clean her up. So now in Deuteronomy 30, or uh, 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 33, read. That then Yahweh thy Elohim uh -huh. will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee. Uh -huh. And will return and gather thee from all the nations. Oh, so there's the gathering again. He's going to turn and gather you from where? All the nations. All the nations. Whether Yahweh thy Elohim uh-huh. If any of thine be driven out into the outmost parts of heaven, from thence will Yahweh thy Elohim How did we get here? <laughs> We've been gathered. I'm just not talking about this weekend. I'm talking about whatever track it was to get us in a seat in one of these classes. We've been called. We've been summoned to be in a place to hear a certain thing. And that's what's happening in class. Now let's go to the prophecy. I want you to get Ezekiel 36, 17, uh, 17 and 19. I want you to get um, I want 1 Kings, um, let's get 1 Kings 8 and 1. And, and, and let's go with Kings first. 1 Kings 8 chapter. First now, and, and I, I want to say this too. And, 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 and again, for, for our newer listeners. Now the first speaker was she kept talking about the if you under, if you heard what she was saying, she kept talking about the law and the prophets. The law and the prophets. The law and the testimony. To the law and to the testimony. What's that? The law again. First five books of your Bible. From Genesis through Deuteronomy. First five books. Uh, accredited unto the man Moses. These things were revealed and shown to Moses, and Moses. And, and those back here pin those things in the book, and they're called the Law, the Torah, and the Pentateuch. First five books. So when we're reading in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, all of those things are the things that took place back here with the children of Israel in this migration, called the Law. So now when she was talking about the prophets of the testimony, that's the next 34 books in your Bible, from the book of Joshua through the book of Malachi. So now what we've come to know and understand is this, is that if something is pinned in the law, written back here in the law, and there, there are principles and manifestations back here, those things are going to be repeated in the prophecy. And you may have more witnesses of a certain thing in the prophecy than you got back here in the law. Now what this does is gives us the faith and confidence in Yahweh that he doesn't change. Because some of us have been everywhere as far as religious philosophy is concerned. And at, at, at some point or another, some just didn't line up. And see, now what we've come to now is this isn't the founder's vision and revelation. And what I mean by that is this. What's being taught in this school, don't, and, and, and she had it written up on the board, don't let this slip. This is the gospel of Yahshua Messiah. The, this doctrine in, in this school, when it's taught and when it's taught correctly, is the gospel of the Holy Spirit. It's His. And what this school is founded upon is what He did, said, and taught, and then those that came, come after Him, they went out to the world and did the self-same thing. Now, you know what? Now that you and I are here, we're obligated. And I like to say this all the time, is that there's a level of responsibility that we take. And especially when you stand up here with this stick in your hand to tell the story right. To preach it like it was preached back here. That if we do that, then we can get the desired result. That a soul might be saved. Now, don't don't make this don't make this mistake that I think that what I say is gonna save you. <laughs> That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is these words that are spoken. These things got to be converted by the Holy Spirit in what's heart and mind. I can't do that. You can't either. You might ask. 1 Kings 8 and 1. 
Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribe. You could stop right there. So now what's happening here, you got to, that, and, and again now, what, what, what we just read here in the migration of the children of Israel and the law being spoken down to their ear, hearing, and just right up here on the chart, that took place in 1490 BBY. So now we just jump all the way over in the prophecy now to 1 Kings, the 8th chapter. And we're, we're approximately 490 years from Moses and the children of Israel in the mouth. Now we're out here, we're up here in Canaan's land, and now we got the dedication of Solomon's temple. So we, we, we graduated from the tabernacle to the temple. Okay? The tabernacle is and was a type of the physical body of Joshua the Messiah. The temple is and was a type of the spiritual body of Joshua the Messiah as he died, buried, and resurrected from the dead as a quickening spirit. Temple. So now, temple dedicated, Solomon has to assemble assemble a group of people here for the dedication of the temple. Just like this group of people would, now I know the dates are different, but you got the, the principle is they were gathered or they there was a, an assembly of a group of folks. Read. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the chief of the fathers of the children of Israel, mm -hmm. unto King Solomon in Jerusalem. Read. That they might bring up the ark of the covenant of Yahweh out of the city of David, mm -hmm. which is Zion. Read. And all the men of Israel assembled themselves unto King Solomon at the feast. In the month Ethiopia. So now, this is like today. This is like last night. It's a great feast. It's a harvest. It's a bounty of information that has to be spoken. It has to be received. It has to be converted into a spiritual reality in one's heart and mind. That's what happens in this class. That's what happens in your class at home. When we do it the right way, that's what happens. You gotta assemble. You gotta come. You gotta be there. And I ask this question at home all the time. And how many of you have ever graduated from anything and never went to the class? <laughs> <laughs> right? It, it, it don't happen, right? <laughs> I got my degree, my diploma, but I never, I never said in one class. All out, all the while. It don't happen. So how is it that you think that you're going to graduate to eternal life and you don't participate in the vehicle that Yahweh has set up for you to come sit in here and listen? It's just not going to happen. It's just not. Read. And all the elders of Israel came, and the priests took up the ark. And they brought up the ark of Yahweh and the tabernacle of the congregation and all the holy vessels that were in the tabernacle, even those did the priests and the Levites bring up. Keep on. And King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel that were assembled unto him were with them before the ark, sacrificing sheep and oxen that they that could not be told nor numbered. This was a big old feast. All kinds of sacrifices being offered up in this great gathering or assembly. So again, we got our principle now. It's coming all the way down. Yahweh's <coughs> group of people together. He's a similar amount of place. He's gathering them together. So something can be delivered to them. Something can be spoken into their hearts and minds. They can receive something. I want to go all the way down to the 10 verse. I don't have time, so we're going to move on. But y'all read this when you get home. Now get Ezekiel. 36.17, read from about the 19th verse, and I want you to jump all the way down to the 24th verse. 36.17, yes ma'am. Read. And as of you, O my flock, thus said God Yahweh, behold, I judge between lambs and kids. Ezekiel 36.17, some man, when the house of Israel dwelt in their own land, they defiled it by their own way. So now when the house of Israel dwelt in their own land, they defiled it, read. By their own way. Uh-huh. And by their doings, their way was before me as the uncleanness of a removed woman. Now watch this. See, some things don't change. When he got her 
out here, she corrupted herself. I'm talking about the children of Israel. Now the he is, the, is Yahweh that delivered her to here. But her is this group of people, this assembly. They corrupt themselves with the calf. And there had to be some intercession made in the 32nd chapter of Exodus by Moses, saying that, look, Yahweh, don't destroy them. I'll die for them. He's a type too. He's a type of the Holy Spirit. He's a type of God's the Messiah. Look, Moses wasn't even present in the camp when the, when the, when the camp was constructed. He wasn't there. He's up in the mount doing what he's supposed to be doing. Now the 73 didn't wait. They go back down and you got a camp, you got a camp constructed. Then Moses comes down and offers himself for them and he's not guilty of anything that they committed. See, when we talk about types and shadows, this is a perfect example of one. So then, then, then Yahshua's got to come in and offer himself as a willing sacrifice for the sins of the whole world and he's not guilty of anything. What this class has done and is doing for us is connecting the dots. It's making it make sense that, ooh, this goes with this, this goes with this, this goes with this. Now I understand why that was done. This is what this is what this teaching has done. And I say this in my class all the time, in our class all the time, that this Bible that we walk around with in our book bags, sit in class on our lap, is shrinking. It's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Because Yahweh is lining this stuff up for us. I ain't that smart. I ain't that smart. I couldn't figure this out. One day I get ready to go to class, I'm going to divert for a second. Get dressed, brushing, stick my foot in the closet, stick my foot in the shoe, stick my other foot in the closet, stick my foot in the shoe, run out the door, run the class. Sit down on the front row. Like I always do, get my Bible out, got my notes, scripture lesson, I'm, I'm sitting there getting stuff ready to go. Look down at my feet, Jimmy, I got two different shoes on. <laughs> they feel the same. <laughs> I got two different shoes. I'm going, and I'm on the front. I'm saying, ooh. I'm trying to slide on one of my seat. Now, I told you, I ain't that smart. Where I got you? Where I got you? We got a roll. Ezekiel. Ezekiel. 36.18. Yes. Before I poured my fury upon them for the blood that they had shed upon the land. Uh -huh. And for their idols wherewith they had polluted it. Yes. And I scattered them among the heathen. Oh, for his little fancy scattered them again. Read. And they were dispersed through the country. Uh -huh. According to their way. Yes. According to their doings. Uh -huh. I judged them. Did he judge them because of that? Drop down to 24 verse. For I will take you from among the heathen. You see the love. You see what the Father's doing? He scattered them. It's just like a good parent with their children. Sometimes you gotta check them. Right? That don't mean you don't love them. But sometimes you gotta check them. Then you come back and, you know, it's like, you know, it's like they say in some houses, you got a good cop, bad cop. And our house is bad cop, worse cop. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, but, but sometimes you gotta check them. But you still, and you check them because you love them. This is what the father, see, everything that we go through and have gone through, Yahweh is, and, 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 and like, like God Eternal was showing us last night with the physical body and the DNA and the RNA, that, that's granular. Yes. You can't see that. But that's an operation that's going on that's necessary to the function of a physical body. And now you get to see how on a granular or microscopic level when things start to go wrong. If it's that way all the way down there, then everything that we are experiencing in our own lives are reflecting this. So when somebody say, bless 3,500 years ago, what does that got to do with me? Everything. Breathe. <laughs> 
For I will take you from among the heathen uh -huh. and gather you out of all countries. Here we go. I'm going to take you from among the heathen. I'm going to gather you from all countries. And will bring you unto your own land. And I'm going to bring you unto your own land. Then will I sprinkle you with clean water. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Then will and, I sprinkle you. And, 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 and you know what? After he gathers them, he's going to wash them. Mm. Didn't he do that here? He gathered her, and then he told Moses to tell him to do what? Wash. To wash up, clean up, because he's going to what? Speak to her. See the principles? Just See how they, they line up? Y'all always do the same thing over and over again. If I don't see it here, maybe you can see it here. That's what he's doing. That's what he has done. That's the beauty of this. This is how this is how loves us. Matthew 9.36. Matthew 23.36.37. Matthew 9.36. But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them, because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Now, when who saw the multitude? Who are we talking about here? This is Joshua now. So now here's what here's what's happened now. That, and, 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 and Dr. Flynn set it up. She talked about to the law and to the prophecy. And the Messiah's got to come along and fulfill these things that were written back then in the law and the prophecy. And he's the only one that knows at that time that all that stuff was talking about him. So we see something set up in the law. Then we see witnesses of it again in the prophecy of this gathering and, and scattering. Then Yahshua Messiah in fulfillment. He's, he's got to come along and say something or do something about it. Read. Then said, no, 936. Then said he unto his disciples. Uh -huh. The harvest truly is plenteous, uh -huh. but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore, Yahweh of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Mm -hmm. And when he had called unto them his twelve disciples, he gave them power against Sherry, go back. Go back to 9 and 36. Yeah, start at the 36th verse and come on back. But when he, 9, Matthew 9 and 36. Mm -hmm. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them, mm -hmm. because they fainted and were scattered abroad. Then, so when he saw the multitudes, he had compassion on them. He felt sorry for them. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You know what? Somebody felt sorry. Come in there. Thank you. Thank you. You fought it. Yes. Now, there's nothing. Come in there. Come in here. It's a lie. You and I have been to be deserving of what we've been given. Nothing you will do, or I've done, to be deserving of this. It's the greatest gift that can ever be given to a soul. Is this. Read. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them, mm -hmm. because they fainted mm -hmm. and were scattered abroad, mm -hmm. as sheep having no shepherd. As sheep that had no shepherd. Read. Then said he unto his disciples, mm -hmm. The harvest truly is plenteous, mm -hmm. but the laborers are few. Mm -hmm. Pray ye therefore, Yahweh of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. And that's what's happening. That's what's happening. 2336. Matthew 2336. Uh -huh. There I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. Diane, who's speaking? Yashua. Does Yashua again read? O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killed the prophets, mm -hmm. and stoned them, which are sent unto thee. Mm -hmm. How often would I have gathered? See, so now he's gathered. telling Israel what they've done. He says, now how often would I have gathered you? Read. And, and, and we see witness of him gathering, 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 all the way down to the law of the prophecy. Then he's got to come in and say, How often would I have gathered you? Like a what? Even as a hen gathereth her chicken. Then he does a Romans 1 19 to 20 on. <laughs> right? <laughs> a, a, a hen, she gathers her chicken. Under her wings. Under her wings. Like, a, like a, a mama bear, she gathers her cubs. Oh, this is a pretty little pet one. You know, don't do it. Right? Don't do it. He 
says, how, then he says, how often would I have done this? Read. Even as a hen gathers for chicken, mm -hmm. under her wings. Read. And he would not. And you would. Behold. I ain't going down there. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll see. Read. Behold, your house is left, left unto you desolate. Mm -hmm. For I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth till ye shall say, Everything I say of you, it applies to me too. I ain't talking at y'all. I'm talking to me. Give me Acts 1 and 3. Here we go. I'm going to take you from among the heathen. I'm going to gather you from all countries. Read. And 
And will bring you unto your own land. And I'm gonna bring you unto your own land. Then will I sprinkle you with clean water. Mm -hmm. Excuse That's me. Then will I sprinkle you. And, 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 and you know what? After he gathers them, he's gonna wash them. Mm -hmm. Didn't he do that here? Mm -hmm. He gathered her, and then he told Moses to tell him to do what? Wash. To wash up, clean up, because he's going to what? Speak to her. See the principles? Just, see how they, they line up? Y'all always do the same thing over and over again. If I don't see it here, maybe you can see it here. That's what he's doing. That's what he has done. That's the beauty of this. This is how, this is how his father loves us. Matthew 9.36 Matthew 23.36-37 Matthew 9.36 mm -hmm. But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them, because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Now, when who saw the multitude? Who are we talking about here? This is Joshua now. So now here's, what, here's what's happening now. Yeah, and, 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 and Dr. Fleming set it up. She talked about to the law and to the prophecy. And the Messiah's got to come along and fulfill these things that were written back in the law and the prophecy. And he's the only one that knows at that time that all that stuff was talking about him. So we see something set up in the law. Then we see witnesses of it again in the prophecy of this gathering and, and scattering. Then Joshua Messiah in fulfillment, he's, he's got to come along and say something or do something about it. Read. Now, nah, 36. Then said he unto his disciples, uh -huh. The harvest truly is plenteous, uh -huh. but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore, Yahweh of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Mm -hmm. And when he had called unto them his twelve disciples, he gave them power against Sherry, go back. Go back to 9 and 36. Yeah, start at the 36 verse. Verses, come on back. But when he, 9, back to 9 and 36. Mm -hmm. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion mm -hmm. on them, mm -hmm. because they fainted and mm -hmm. were scattered abroad. Then so when he saw the multitudes, he had compassion on them. He felt sorry for them. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You know what? Somebody feels sorry for us. Fault did. Yes. Now compassion on us. Come in, come in here, sit down. Get something learned. Mm -hmm. There is nothing you and I have ever done to be deserving of what we've been given. Mm -hmm. Nothing you will do or I've done to be deserving of this. It's the greatest gift that can ever be given to a soul. Is this? Read. Be, but when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them, mm -hmm. because they fainted mm -hmm. and were scattered abroad, mm -hmm. as sheep having no shepherd. As sheep that had no shepherd. Read. Then said he unto his disciples, mm -hmm. The harvest truly is plenteous, mm -hmm. but the laborers are few. Mm -hmm. Pray ye therefore, Yahweh of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. And that's what's happened. That's what's happened. 2336. Matthew. Matthew 2336. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. Diane, who's speaking? Yashua. Does Yashua put in? Read. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that's killed the prophets. Mm -hmm. And stoneth them which are sent unto thee. Mm -hmm. How often would I have gathered? See, so now he's together. telling Israel what they've done. He says, Now, how, how often would I have gathered you? Read. Even if, 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 if we see witness of him gathering, 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 all the way down to the law of the prophecy, then he's got to come and say, How often would I have gathered you? Like a what? Even as a hen gathereth. Then he does a Romans 1, 19 to 20 on. <laughs> right? But <laughs> like then she gathers her chicken. On her wings. On her wings. Like, a, like a, a mama bear. She gathers her cubs. Oh, they're so pretty. Go pet one. You know, don't do it. <laughs> right? <laughs> don't do it. He says, how then he says, how often would I have done this? Read. Even as a hen gathers her chicken mm -hmm. on her wings. 
Read. And ye would not. And you wouldn't. Behold. I ain't going down there. Okay, we'll see. Read. Behold, your house is left, left unto you desolate. Mm -hmm. For I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth till ye shall say, Blessed is he everything that cometh I in the name of you, Yahweh. Everything I say of you, it applies to me too. I ain't talking at y'all. I'm talking to me. Give me Acts 1 and 3. Acts 2 and 8. Uh, Ephesians 1 and 9 and 10. Uh, 1 Peter 1 and 1. Acts 1 and 3. Yes, sir. To yes, whom all himself alive after his passion. So now, after his passion, after Yahshua now goes through this horrific death, being buried in Joseph's tomb, and he resurrects on the third day. He made spiritual appearances. Now what we've done now is we've walked through the law of prophets and then we see Yahshua coming in and fulfilling the thing. Now whatever it is we want to talk about in this class, you're going to see these principles or these precepts repeated over and over again. Whether, whether you want to talk about the, the just the lamb, that can be gone through the law of prophecy and fulfillment. Whether you want to talk about water baptism, it can be run through the law of prophecy and fulfillment. Whether you want to talk about circumcision or tithing, or you, 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 you name the topic or the subject, it can be taken through the law of prophecy and fulfillment. And again, this establishes your generation of Yahweh. That he doesn't change, and he repeats things over and over and over again that one might see and understand. And that this is what separates this class from everything else. Every other religious philosophy that we've ever heard of is that it's Yahshua's gospel. This isn't, this isn't T.D. Jakes' ministry. And what he thinks, or any other pastor or minister, or even or any other minister in the room. This includes us. And it's more important to us. Because you know why? Because we say, we say that we got the truth. We say that. We say this is the only truth. That's what we say. Then if that's the way that it is, then don't come in here and corrupt it. You know, it's just going to run a little bit hot here, really. It just is. Acts, Acts 1 and 3. Yes. 3. Yes, ma'am. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion mm -hmm. by, many, by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of Yahweh. Say, so being seen of them 40 days and speaking after the things pertaining to the kingdom of Yahweh. See, he, he, he's getting ready to gather them again. You're not scripture mm -hmm. this, this is somewhere they gotta be. Mm -hmm. they Acts two and eight. Mm -hmm. And how hear every man in his own tongue? Back up, back to the fifth verse. Come down. Fifth verse. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem <coughs> Jews, devout men out of every nation mm -hmm. under heaven. Mm -hmm. Now when this was noise the rock. Now I didn't have this, I didn't have this red prophecy, but we're not going to do it now because I only got about two minutes left. But if you go back and read the 11th chapter of the book of Isaiah as well. And, you're, and, and you'll, you'll see places all over the world where, they, where these, group, these folks are scattered. And now in, in Acts, the second chapter, you got places from everywhere where they're being gathered. Read. Now, this, now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own tongue, in his own language. Now, where, well, now where's he reading how the Bible is illustrated right here on the chart where it says Pentecost? And then you got it illustrated again here, and here on the elementary chart, you got the day of Pentecost. Same situation. Read. So, and, and you got a gathering of people, a gathering of people, and they're going to receive something. Now back up, the difference back here was when they gathered there in the upper room, they had no expectation of what was getting ready to happen. It just happened. They didn't have 
have to do nothing. They just had to be there. That hasn't changed. Kind of like right now. Ain't got to do nothing. Just got to be there. Read. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, mm -hmm. Behold, are not all these who speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in his own tongue wherein we were born? Read. Armenians and Medes and Elamites and dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea. Now, the other thing that it just, and just let's, let's, let's connect this dot. So remember, we started back here in Exodus 19, and it was the 3rd of June, right? Where they, 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 and they were told to watch it to clean up, mm -hmm. and against the third day, that law, so we spoke about that they're hearing on June the 6th. Now, we're all the way over in the book of Acts now. What day is it? Oh, June the 6th. So now, see, back here is a type of what was really going to happen here in the hearts and minds of men. They're going to be a recipient. Listen to this, and let's, let's, move, let's move right here. That, that what happened in the other room, and you see it right here, it says the promise of Abraham is fulfilled. Now, it goes past the cross all the way down to the upper room with the Jews here, and that's the, the day of Pentecost, or the new covenant, or the real covenant, or the spiritual covenant, is written in the hearts and minds of men in the upper room on the day of Pentecost. The reality of that back there. They had to gather to get it. They had to be there. So it can be spoken. Kind of like now. First Peter 1 and 1. Now I promise I'll sit down. First Peter 1 and 1. Mm -hmm. Peter, an apostle of Joshua, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, mm -hmm. Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, mm -hmm. elect according to the foreknowledge of, of Elohim the Father, to sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Joshua. Mm -hmm. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. So now all those that were scattered from everywhere you are, grace unto you and peace be multiplied.
of the makeup, cellular makeup, of a human body, knowing that we are all comprised of trillions of cells, but to know what is going on according to the purpose of Yahweh on a cellular basis was just profound. And I know some people said they were just on the edge of their seat to appreciate the opportunity. So what I want to do is remind us more of a testimony and also there are a couple of things that I'm going to share and try to be as brief as I can and just have my seat. Again, I am more than happy and I give all praise and honor and glory to the Father through His Son, Joshua, to even be standing here alive. I didn't know back in 2020 if I would survive. I didn't know if I would be here. Uh, even till this day and this time. So I don't count it lightly to be here uh, standing before you all in this assembly. I don't know, neither do any of you, if the opportunity will present itself for you to come together once again and assemble yourselves with your brother as you are doing now. As we've seen, people have, as we say in class, taken off the flesh or died here within the state of Florida. And it used to be said when I came into class in 1988 that we didn't have that many deaths. Like people were living here, right? You know, and then uh, it came a season as we knew it would, and now we're here, and we're seeing it now. So I, I would be remiss to not mention what it feels like to come into this class and the one that was even as our former state dean, Dr. Jacqueline Mason, is not there. I'm sitting next to Dr. Jimmy Clark, our current state dean, but she's not. I'm going to mention, and I will tell you that she is missed. Um, I have to say, uh, our former state dean, Dr. Edward Mason, the one that Yahweh sent to the state of Florida in the year 1975, some 20 years ago, Yahweh saw fit to take him out. And he told us many times, standing in the assemblies before us, that Yahweh had shown him that he must soon take off this, my tabernacle. And he said, preparing us that a time will come, but most of us would sit here and not ever, when we would hear it being said, would not ever believe that Yahweh would have ever taken before. We had already sort of hope that we got out of here with it, is what we used to say. We held on to the hope. You understand? And I remember one time he said, standing on the floor, that when it happens, you're going to miss it, too. And I'm saying to you all that, yes, I do. And I'm grateful for the opportunity to have sat under him and been tutored by him. I want to say this to you. The state of Florida is changing politically. The state of Florida is changing. Now, the whole climate politically is changing in this state. And that is very critical, very crucial, too. Because whatever is happening out there in the world, can y'all hear me okay? I don't want to unmask. But if you can't hear me, I'll do it. I say a prayer on mask. It's changing. Politically, this country, the state of this state. And when the speakers are on the floor and they're admonishing and they're warning about that mystery of iniquity and his job, we were taught there are three unclean frauds. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes, economic, religious, political. And you see it now when you turn the news on. You hear it and you can see it. And it lets you know that we're in trouble. So what I want to say to you all, and, and, and listen, more so if you are a son, more so. Having or saying that the seed of Yahshua is in you, that's on this side where we are down here in this natural creation. To be where we are down here on this earth plane. Not in the angelic realm. Not as it was said that some been blessed and able to transition and move on. But to be down here, listen, let me say this. He was 
the hated, the most hated man that walked the earth plain. And he told his disciples, just know this. If they hate you, know that they hated me first. You have to understand what it means to even walk around down here. Being a seed of Yahshua. Having him in you, as you say. See, it is indeed a gift, but it is a reason why it has to be protected. <clears throat> the admonishments, as the previous speaker said, the guidance, all of this has to be because of who you are. Because if you are here now and Yahshua is in you, then you too are here. We talk about the true hate that you give. We talk about Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, and his hatred for the sons. But just as he must be present to hate, then so is Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua, present to love, present to heal, present to help, present to guide, present to teach, present to love. He is here. But I want you to know, as I said to a people back home in Jacksonville, the threat is real. It's real here in the state of Florida, y'all. The man that once held presidency in this country, he didn't come here for naught. There's purpose right in the state of Florida. And another is rising up. See, in your scriptures, you would hear Daniel talk about those little horns. You know, a horn rising up, a beast up out of the sea. Went all the way to John and Revelation. These beasts, these horns of kingdoms and rulers and leaders, presidents, kings. That's what they represented back then. But I want you to know down here now the reality, you and I are sitting under it right now. We are under the reality of it all right now. So I want to share this with you in conclusion for my testimony. We're at the end, and I want to come right off with Dr. Uh, Allen's testimony. We're down here at the end of this age or world. What age or world? The present kingdom age or world. We're down here at the end of the sixth day. So that picks up a principle of six, because he said this here, 2 Peter 3 and 8, where he says, one day is with Yahweh, as a what? As a thousand years, and a thousand years is as one day. Now we've had two physical ages or worlds to exist, starting with that back here with Adam and ending with Noah and the flood. All right? That's the antediluvian age or world. And within it were two dispensations for two days. It was beautiful when we first heard it said that after two days is the feast of the Passover. Because we knew after two days there was a passing over. Then after Noah, his sons, and their wives came out in this post diluvian age or world. Here, then, and this world here was 1,656 years, and we were taught how to prove this. Yes. Is that right? Yes. By the righteous lineage coming all the way down from Adam down to Noah. That's how you prove that 1656. After Noah, and his sons and their wives came on over to repopulate or repeople the earth here. You understand? Then this world or age after the flood, anti means before diluvian flood, post means after diluvian flood. This age or world is 2,377 years, all right? And within it is two days. All right, then from Adam down to the end of this post diluvian age is 4,000 years or four days. Is that right? And then this ends here, as the previous speaker was talking about, with the death of the Messiah. For those that are new in this class and hearing it for the first time, the one that we call Jesus, 
that died on the cross for you and I, he didn't live or exist within the same time frame that you and I live in down here now. All right? He lived over in another age, another time, another world, known as the post diluvian age. He was born at the end of that age or world, you understand? Grew up, went into his ministry at the age of 30 until 33, where he was crucified out there on the cross at the end of that world, end of that age, having fulfilled all those types, as the previous speaker was talking about, and shadows, metaphors, and allegories, similes, things that were set up back there that was all testifying to him. You understand? The lamb, as the previous speaker said, the bread that was back there. You understand? All of those things that were types and shadows, this man had to come in to fulfill. Fulfill means to complete, finish, bring to an end. And his death on the cross, the way in which he died, the date in which he died, how he died, not just that he died, but how he died, is all, as it was just said, in fulfillment of the law and the prophets, in fulfillment of the scriptures. You understand? So here, Hebrews 9.26, the apostle Paul says, how then he must often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once at the end of the age or the end of the world, as he appeared to put away sin by the what? On the sacrifice, of, sacrifice of himself. So at the end of this world, she is in it already twice. That's where he came in. That's where he was crucified. That's where he died, was buried. And he also resurrected all at the end of this age here. You understand? Now his death, just as the previous speaker had mentioned, the death of the lamb back here, these are the things that we were taught coming into this class, that from the death of this lamb back here to the speaking out of that old covenant or that old law back here was some 53 days. Is that right? You understand? So then when he came in to fulfill, now that's the speaking out of that old law or that old covenant that he was talking about that happened on June the 6th. All right, from the death of the lamb, four-legged lamb back here, to the speaking down of that old law or that old covenant back here is June the what? Six. Is that right? 53 days. So then from the death of the true lamb, we talk about Yahshua the Messiah coming in and dying, being buried, resurrected the third day to the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost or that new covenant or that new law is 53 days. Is that right? And that closed one age or world out and then opened up the one that you and I live in now. So the Messiah didn't walk physically in the age or world that you and I live in in that special prepared body. But it didn't say that the Holy Spirit, <laughs> this is important yeah. because the same Holy Spirit that was back here in the body of the Messiah doing the teaching, in fact, the same Holy Spirit that had come from the beginning all the way down. You understand? When he formed the man Adam and started to walk this walk, I stepping down through the ages of dispensation. Same spirit, same Holy Spirit is the one, you understand, that was poured out on the day of Pentecost. And I want you to know that, listen, he coming on down, he has purpose, is what I shared with the people back then. Just like beginning at Moses, as the previous speaker just said to you, back here, when you in Exodus, the third chapter, and the angel has astro-projected this image of uh, uh, this man, and astro-projected this image of this angel to Moses here at the burning bush, and he's given Moses his name and signs and wonders to come down into the land of Egypt to deliver them up out of the land of Egypt. But what he said to Moses in this vision, he said, listen, I am come down. See, listen, we're not preaching a sky God. We're not preaching that he's up above the sun, moon, and stars. Yahweh made a bodily appearance. The fullness of the Godhead was manifested in a physical body to deliver the 
children of Israel up out of the land of Egypt. Yes, he had support with him. Yep. That's why we told you when they launched out of the Cape, right here in, the, in, 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 in Florida, when they launched from the Cape, that rocket that's going up, it has two supports with it. Yep. Those two solid rocket boosters yes. that's there to help it lift and take off. See, he's down here. You understand? To come on up. See, it's getting ready to thrust. Yes. It's getting ready to come on up full force, full power. That's what the previous speaker was saying. It's going to take power to come up out of there. Why well, you got to have a two solid rocket booster? That's who Moses going to represent. That's who Aaron's going to represent. But do you see the rocket? Yes. Do you see the one that's come for? Yes. Do you understand? All fired up and ready to deliver them up out of here. You understand? And that's the reason why, though they helped with it, just like the two no priests in the pattern. See, only one man was allowed to go on in to the most holy place. Just like he who came down to deliver them up out of the land of Egypt, he was the only one. Can you understand it? Listen, if you get it right, if you understand it as the previous speaker just said to you, listen, though he called Moses and Moses was full, born full of the Holy Spirit, listen, he called him down to be a help, to be an assistant to him. But can you appreciate the fact that all the God that there was and is, just like when he said to the founder, Dr. Kendall, sitting there looking at it, thinking in himself, you understand, the founder sitting there asleep, I'm talking about our former dean, Looking at the man thinking, you mean to tell me all the God that there is is manifesting that body? And he, listen, he come out of that sleep, didn't he? Yeah. He looked at me and said, what is that? So he said, listen, man, you understand? It's hard for this old man to believe, but it's just the way that it is. See, he ain't really sending nobody. He came himself. He's come for you, and I mean present tense. He's come for you. Yes. You understand? That's what he's come down in a pocket for. You understand what I'm saying? Listen, this 3,500 years ago teaching you all these things were written for our admonishment. Is that right? They're written for our admonishment. That's 1 Corinthians 10 and 11. Is that right? Upon whom the end of the world or angels what? are come. So he came down in a body for the express purpose of delivering the children of Israel up out of the land of Egypt. So the high priest could have two low priests to have it, but they can only have it so far. We gotta let them two solid rocket boosters fall back to the earth, because I got a bone on them in heaven. Yes. You understand what I'm talking about? That's how it is, according. Back here, you understand what I'm talking about? No need to wonder why Moses physically couldn't go on in there. You understand what I'm talking about? He had already said, listen, I am come down to the level. It, it wasn't about you. He came. See, this is what this great mystery is all about. Knowing how he came for he came to deliver them. Is that right? That's why he had to give them his name. So when they were delivered up out of the land of Egypt, they were delivered what? In his name. Is that right? As the previous speaker said, he gave them his gospel. You understand? So when they come up out of the land of Egypt, they're delivered by his gospel. His gospel being the only gospel that can save. That's why I don't have no S on it. Like names. Like gospels. You understand what I'm talking about? It's singular. You understand? Listen, back home we told him, it's time to learn the power of one. Why he only have to say a thing one time? You think he's been saying that over and over and over? No, that's just how it resonates. Coming all the way down. This is my name. And it's just done resonating all the way down to where it is same spirit in a body telling them thus said Yahweh get in another body tell them thus said Yahweh get in another body tell them thus said Yah Yahweh see it's just a resident thing and come all the way down you understand we talk about the power of one thing we talk about the power of one gospel you understand what I'm talking about you don't need no whole bunch you understand just one gospel 
And this, you understand, deliverance that took place here, the Moses is used in hell. Aaron is used in hell. Why they got to fall back? Why they got to fall back? See, he couldn't take them over, could he? But that's why it just continued to move on through there. Is that right? See, he's showing us these things. He's showing you to, to let you see how that he himself, he brought salvation, as he said, it's in your brain. In self alone. My L is self alone. Is that right? You understand what I'm talking about? He died what? In his self alone. He's showing you that all of this right here, I brought salvation alone and by myself. And of the people, he said, it was none to happen. We talk about the power of one. See, you want to know, as the previous speaker said, why am I here? What has he come, brought me into these classes for? So that Yahshua is someone. See, he got to be in a body. He got to be in a body down here preaching to us. That's why he charged his disciples to go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptize them in the name, singular. Not in war, but in the name of the Father. The name of the Holy Spirit. You understand what I'm talking about? The Son and the Holy Spirit. These three are what? One. He's showing you that power that is manifested now. Do you understand? So not anybody. I didn't want, I didn't send everybody out. He chose me to send them out because they was told to tell in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost, waiting, expecting that the Holy Spirit and power, they were going to be a little different. That's why the founder put them in there, in that Elohim book there, under that apostolic confirmation, because he had to let you know it was something different about them. They had the power in them to preach the gospel and to quicken that seed within of them. You understand? You may have been there, sitting there, but didn't even know that seed was there. But the Holy Spirit in our body, preaching his gospel, is power to quicken that seed. Is that right? Within once. That's the importance. You understand what I'm talking about? When it said to come down here, I'm coming for something. And that's why I want you all to see. You understand what I'm talking about? That how he brought them, according to the purpose of Abraham, told them that they had to go down and be in bondage. But at the expiration of 400 or 430, that's when he came and delivered them and brought them into the wilderness. Gave them his law, June the 6th. You understand what I'm talking about? He came up Moses, I invited him to class up here, up top of the mountain, and showed him himself as Exodus 24, what, 9 and 10, that he showed him Yahweh Elohim, and then showed him transfigured into this third furnace, intangible tabernacle, then back into himself and showed him how he brought the what? Creation in by the pattern. This is important, because he showed him the first thing, you understand that there was darkness there. Is that right? And then he said, let there be what? Light. That's Genesis, the first chapter. The second thing, there's a dividing of waters above from the waters beneath. But on the third day, you understand, is when he rolled back the waters off the face of the earth that caused dry land to appear. These are the things that he's showing to Moses up here, how he brought this creation in by the pattern. So he rolled the waters back off the face of the earth, dry land appeared, and then the seed and vegetation is coming forth on the third day. Now see, this third day is a reveal. This third day is a reveal. A reveal of, it's a revelation. A revelation of what? You understand? Whatever happened back here on the what? First day. You understand? Genesis 1, first chapter, where he's, he's saying to you that the spirit is what? Moving upon the face of the deep. What is he doing? He is sowing seed. He's copulating. He's sowing seed. Is that right? On the what? First day of creation. Then on the third day, three days from that, you understand? That's when the waters are rolled off the base of earth. Dry land appeared. Seed and vegetation is coming forth. What you got now is a reveal of whatever was sown back there on the first day. Now listen, that that is under life is back there. That that is under death. Coming forth, you got things that are what you would call that you can eat and still live. And you got things that are poisonous. Is that right? All of them came forth what? on that third day. That would be as the wheat 
and attack. All that came forth on the what? Third day. You understand? Who sowed the seeds? The Father. You understand what I'm talking about? Now, nah, here, three days from that, it's time for a reveal. And like he said, all you do is count three days on. Is that right? So you go one, two, three days again. Is that right? Then he brings the man in. That's on the sixth day of creation. You understand? So he's talking about that old covenant. You understand? It's the sixth. This, this month is considered the sixth month. But it's according to the Gregorian calendar. But it's actually the third month with y'all. See how he connect them anyway? Like he worked with them anyway? Like the first month is January. Is that right? According to the Gregorian calendar. But it's the fourth month. So when you're looking at it, it's one or four. See that 14 is what he set up back up. Is that right? So it's the third month. So three or six. So that's where you and I are now. We got up here 6,000 years. And that's why three, two days here, you understand? Five and six, just like you had one and two, three and four. Now you got what? Five and six. From Adam down to Yahshua is what? 6,000. Now, 4,000 here, but 6,000 to here where we are now. Or the sixth day. Is that right? But we got one. Two, three physical ages. One, two, three physical ages. Bring us to six. 360, that's like a complete cycle. That's the whole purpose coming to a conclusion. So he brought flesh in on the sixth day. Previous speaker was telling you about this old covenant back here. You understand? But you're also dealing with the date and time that he brought that first man in. Because he brought him in according to the vision that he showed him. He brought him in on the what? Sixth day. Is that right? In what month did he show it to most? In the month of June. He brought the man up from virgin mother earth in the third month, June, on the sixth day. Is that right? So listen, one, two, three. And this man, when he came up, the man is created, the woman is in. G, where you at? Dixon, where you at? You understand what I'm talking about? He said, let us make man. Oh, Y'all know I got it too. In our image and after our likeness. So he formed the man. This is important. Because listen, from the time that man got here, stand over here, he been in trouble. And here's the trouble. You understand? John the Revelations, he said, Revelations, the, uh, the, uh, 12th chapter. He said that there was what? War in heaven. I don't want you thinking it strange that there's going to be war down here now. I don't care whether it's political. I don't care whether it's cyber. I don't care whether it's domestic. I don't care whether it's doctrinal. I don't care whether there's going to be war. And that's all he was showing last night in the physical body with the T cells already ready. You understand? Yeah. You understand? You come up here, they you come up here and they're looking at you like, did you begin at Moses? They're looking at you like, you understand? They, they, they're looking at you. You understand? You understand? Tell me, remember, they're looking. That's right. Did you use the pattern? <laughs> See, they're looking at you. You understand what I'm talking about? To discern whether or not you gonna keep it the way I fish it. See, in the state of Florida, and I tell you, we're in trouble. We got a man that say, I don't want your book. But the man that came here want us walk. He came here to preach this gospel to wake you up. He came here to make you conscious. You sleep. There's a spirit of deep sleep, as the previous speaker say, and darkness that was poured out upon all men from the fall of Adam back there in the garden. You understand? And the devil wants you to stay asleep. In other words, he don't want you to know his story. Do y'all understand history? Well, we can't talk about how the blacks got him. No, we can talk about everybody else's story. But we can't talk about, do you understand, history. We can't tell you how they throw you on a bunch, bunch of boats and stack you on one. You understand? You don't understand how important it is that you still here right now. You made it because your ancestors. Yahweh provided, and he looked out for you. And he obviously had something in them. Listen, they prayed to God. Many of them ran for their lives. They ran up north. They ran all kinds of ways. 
Do you understand? But nobody want to talk about that. They want you to sleep on the history school teacher. They don't want you to ever know the truth. You understand? But listen, it's just like in this school. You ain't got to begin at Moses. Yes, you got to. You got to get his story. You understand? That's the only way you're going to wake up. Listen, he said, wake up. Now I'm sleep. That's what didn't come in to put you to sleep. He came in to wake you up. Now, now you understand what I'm talking about? That's the truth of the You understand? The other, that's the other mystery that want to keep you in darkness. And that's why I told them way back then. I said, listen, back then, Genesis, you read with Cain when he went and built in the city. He went to the land of what? No. He wants you to sleep. You understand what I'm talking about? But here he came in to do what? Thank you. He, he came in to do what? To wake you up. Now that's what the preaching of this gospel, how he died, buried, and resurrected. Resurrect, do you hear resurrect? How many times do we lay out and show you the man laid out on the floor, covered up? Is that right? It's a mic. You understand? It doesn't matter. Mic. Oh, I'm sorry. It doesn't matter. You understand what I'm talking about? How he come in to, you understand, preaching this gospel to wake you up. That's what it's all about. That's what you came down to this class for. That's what somebody came here to the state of Florida to wake you up, to bring you conscious. Before they didn't know, as the previous speaker said, no, we didn't know his name. No, and then people say, I heard it, but you couldn't prove it. Yes, right. You couldn't prove it, you didn't know it was all over your face. You didn't know. That's how you breathe. You didn't know these things. You didn't know you walked out. Come on, y'all. You didn't know these things. You didn't know you understand? Mm -hmm. The gospel of how he died, buried, and resurrected the third day. You didn't know where to begin in the Bible. See, these are things that have been done to wake you up and to bring you conscious. And he said to us, listen, he said, I'm here. You understand what I'm talking about? To make you conscious. You understand what I'm talking about? This divine vision and revelation is direct from Yahweh unto you. Present to it. This is how you were always taught. Right. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, whether we agree or disagree, this is what we was given. And we that are down here should be brethren that love one another. Because guess what? Regardless, you my brother, you are more like me, so. But you my brother. You're my sisters here. Yeah. You understand? And listen to me. I do love you all. I love you all. I don't feel no hatred in my heart. None of you all have done anything to me personally. I love you. That's why I don't never have a problem speaking to you, reaching to you, saying something encouraging or whatever to you. Because I love you. Because I know that the Father made us here in this tale of four out of love. Yes. I know he did. Yes. Yes. I know he did. And I'm saying to you all, this day, that we should love ye one another. Yes. You understand? Let's finish this thing out. As the previous speakers have gotten up before you, let's finish it out. You understand? So it's my testimony just to say to you that he brought it 360. He brought flesh in on six. And when he formed the man, Genesis 1, 26, 2 and 7, or 2 and 4, is that right? He brought him in on the sixth day according to Moses' fish. Is that right? And then he said, he breathed into the man's nostril the breath of life. I will tell you the reality of spiritual COVID. When he cast them spirits out that was born, heaven might have been stained, part against the dragon, judging from his stage. Neither was his place found anymore in heaven. You want to know where his place at? He was cast out of heaven to the what? To the earth. Is that right? And he formed man of the what? Dust of the earth. Them spirits were waiting on him. I told you, the man been in trouble since he got here. When you gonna realize it? These you can't see with your natural eye. These are spiritual spirits. This is that satanic DNA that he was talking about. They came on down, and this are all his little RNA, all of that replication of it. You understand? Came right on down with him. That's what you heard. 
last night. And listen, you sit here want to know the two of the righteous DNA. That's because right. there is DNA unto death and there is DNA unto life. But they're both of the same source. They're both of the same source. But you're just sitting here as he prayed. He said, Father, make them one as you and I are one. Is that right? Make them out of the same stuff that you have made me out of. That's what you're here for. So I'm concluding that when he brought this man in, it's on the sixth day of creation, and when he brought him in, he brought his bride with him. You and I got a chance to see. You understand what I'm talking about? A king and a queen crowned at the end of this age. Something we would have never seen in our lifetime. A king and a queen. Why? Because you're down at the end of this age and you're about to see the true royal coronation yeah. or the true royal what? Found. Ain't that right? See, listen, this is why you had coronavirus. This is why it came from the most holy place. Is that right? That's how you catch it. That's why we had to cover up. You understand what I'm talking about? Because you couldn't see it. And then you had people walking around asymptomatic. Didn't even have those how the founder refers to him as insidious. He refers to the camp council as a representation or a manifestation of a satanic spirit. That's all Corona was. Is that right? Crowned spike proteins around the cells of that, you understand, virus. Listen, it's a virus. Once in this lifetime, when we look at the spelling of this V, I, R, and then us, it's a virus. And it's attacking mankind. Do you understand? Where's attacking that? The lungs. Is that right? Your breath of life. We watch this thing play out in the news, in the media. We watch the man stand on the neck of a man for six, four, eight. Why? Because we're at the end of the age. Back here with Noah, you understand? It was like 600 years of Noah's life. Is that right? That that world ended. But when he gave him the vision, he gave it to him 480 years, 648, before that world came to an end. So these things that made news and went all everywhere at the end of this age down here, you gotta know when you turn your TV on that all you looking at is the purpose of Yahweh down here now. Thank you. You understand? So he formed him of the dust of the earth and he breathed into the man's nostrils the breath of life. So that spirit did what? Just in and in there. But the fact that you heard breathe, mm. do you know that that was coming for your very what? Right. Breath of life. Is that right? You understand what I'm talking about? And he in there for the time that he's in there. And then he said in, in Genesis 6 and 3, my spirit shall not always strive with me as six and three, for he is what? But flesh. You understand? So he inhale, but at a certain time, he's just waiting to exhale. That spirit gonna just step on out of that body. But when he brought the man forth, y'all, he had his bride with him. Listen, that's in the beginning. So you don't have to wonder down here now that the spirit man ain't down here now. You ain't gotta ask, as the previous speaker said to you, what he come down for? For his bride. Yeah. Is that right? You see him back here. The woman was in it in the beginning. Do you understand? The planet Jupiter up there with that hole in the side. Is that right? This in the side. And he told you that's why y'all should this in the side. Why? Because we're going to put her back. We got to put her back. Ain't that right, y'all? See, make them one and she would not one. I want you to understand what he's doing down here at the end of this sixth day or this dispensation. He came to get his bride. And listen, Florida, he loves you. This I know. I know he loves you. You all were created out of it. You are our beloved of the Father. And that's why I want you to know. And it don't matter if you ever see me or can't ever see me on this floor again. I want you to know that I love you. I love you as my brother. You understand what I'm talking about? And I'm here at any time to be able to help to the Dean Curry or any of you all that are ministers or deans down here, do you understand? I'm here for that. I hope somebody got something out of my testimony. I give all praise and honor and glory to the Father through his son. Listen, it has not been in vain your coming. You understand? It has not been in vain your obedience. You will be rewarded. Just like the disobedience got paid. The obedient sons 
will be rewarded for your obedience. Y'all stay in class. Listen, keep prepared to defend and stand and fight. You understand? For that, that is true. That is a part of our aims to earnestly continue for the God of salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons of the children of Yahweh. But you need to know that down here, Yahshua is here, present tense, as the last name of this guru is telling you. You understand? To inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua. He got to be present, babies. In order for this to be so, he done came all the way down. And he didn't get to the end, No, I be with you always, yes. even right. to the end yes. of the end of the truth, or the yes. end of time. Yes. He didn't come down into a bad That's right. I Sure. <laughs> 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 
Then I write. And the devil started to argue that you would tell him, you said, don't go to bed, don't go to bed. Don't go to bed, don't go to bed. How about this? I'm going to get to the conclusion of it. How about you come on down here to the class? The devil. He tell you don't come. <laughs> Is that right? And then turn around and he come. See how he doesn't deceive you? Boy, I thought that was the most. I ain't saying the exact how he said. But I'm telling you, he try to keep you out of class and tell you don't come. And y'all got the perfect excuse now. The pandemic. You got an underlying condition. You had the same condition that you had before the pandemic. And you were told to come to class and by George, you all going to trip over the next fella to get you. Well, all I can say is y'all come on back to class. And the devil will beat you here. <laughs> Listen, after the children of Israel, because we're we, we going to move on. We ain't got but a few minutes, and we're going to try and say just a few words. Some things that I learned since I've been here. And I came in the class when I was 22 years old. And I didn't have a gray hat nowhere. I didn't have, I never had a whole lot of hair. But I didn't have a gray hat nowhere. All right? Strong, had me a two pack, I never had a six. <laughs> but I had a two pack. See? But when I came in here and Yahweh sat me down and began to teach me, I told my wife, I said, listen, I said, that can't be the truth. But I tried to get out of this thing, but Yahweh kept me coming and kept me coming and kept me coming till finally he showed me a little something. My light bulb went off. I said, wow, that's pretty. Then he told us to go back to church. Check that out. Do some comparison as to what you've been given as a gift. This is a gift. Y'all that came down here to this classroom and now you got a gift. You got a genuine gift. That nobody else can give you. I can't give my wife this kind of gift. But here it is, Yahweh gave us a gift. He gave us of himself a divine vision from heaven and caused us to be able to share our gift that he gave us with you. Ain't that something? Now here it is that after the death of this man and the children of Israel had come up out of the land of Egypt through the divided waters of the Red Sea on into the wilderness of Sinai, they wandered in the wilderness for some 47 days. And Yahweh brought them right here to Mount Sinai. At that time, he caused Moses up into the mount in Exodus the 19th chapter, and he tells Moses, instructed Moses, to have the children of Israel to wash up and to clean up because the third day he wanted to speak to them. Is that right? Now look why Moses coming down out the mount and told Israel, he also told them, don't come at your wives. Wash up and clean up. Ain't that right? Because he want to speak. That's the 19th chapter of Exodus. Right? The previous speakers went on to tell you that when they got out here in the wilderness and Yahweh called them up into the mouth, I want you to read over there in Exodus where you give that time where Dr. Allen had read in the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. Now, the first month of the year to Yahweh is April. It's not January. So now you've got April. The children of Israel have left the land of Egypt. What is I have some 47 days, and they get to Mount Sinai. Yahweh calls Moses up into Mount Sinai the same day, which is June the 3rd, right? 
Tell them to wash up and to clean up because it gets the third day, people are going to speak your law. So that's about what? June the 6th. Ain't that right? So you read over the 20th chapter what he had to say. Now, what Yahweh is going to do at, all, at, at, uh, at this particular time with Israel, he's going to make a covenant. Yahweh made many covenants. That wasn't the only covenant that he made at this time. He had made the covenant of circumcision. See, you got an Adamic covenant, you got an a, 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 a old covenant, you got the Noahic covenant, you got a lot of covenants. But this one in particular we're talking about is going to take place on June the 6th. Something happens on June the 6th. What is it? 20th chapter, first verse. And Elohim spake all these words, saying. Now here it is. That Yahweh is speaking all these words, saying. Read. I am Yahweh. Now he's Yahweh. got Israel gathered here around this mount in tents. And he's beginning to speak unto them. I am Yahweh. Thy Elohim, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, and thou shalt have no, no other God before me. You know why? Because he's jealous. And as the speaker told you, see, he married Israel here in the wilderness. He made Israel his wife. That's what he did. See, and he had us, we so smart, we repeated in the natural. Ain't that right? Long time ago when I got married, you had to have a blood test. Well, guess what? When Yahweh married Israel Hill, it still had to be a blood test. There had to be a sacrifice offered up. And he said this, all that Yahweh has said, what we do, keep reading. I want you to read about 13, 14, and 15 verse. Because we're just trying to establish something back here in order to move on. Because this covenant that Yahweh made with Israel, see, and they said that they would do it. Read. Exodus 20, 13. Uh-huh. Thou shalt not commit murder. This is that this covenant. Here's the agreement. Here's what he's speaking down to Israel, and they're going to agree with it. Read. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not commit adultery. What was the first one? Thou shalt not commit murder. Thou shalt not commit murder. We have to explain that. That's another lecture. Read on. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not steal. Now you hear him back here speaking that unto the children of Israel. And you know what? He didn't use a bullhorn. And it didn't use a loudspeaker. Everybody that was assembled around this mountain, and Yahweh spoke that law in the 20th chapter, he spoke it into their hearing. So nobody could say, I didn't hear it. What did he say? None of that stuff. He spoke it within them. Read. 16 first, thou should not bear false witness. And thou should not bear false witness. So now you can see back here, he spoke the law, right? And they said that all that Yahweh has said, will, he, will they do and be obedient, right? Now Moses is up here, uh, uh, called back up into the mountain in Exodus, the 24th chapter. Now he spoke the law. It's the Israel hearing, is that right? They're down here beneath this, they're down here at this mountain. Y'all, y'all, you know, you have to pay attention because Everything cannot be told in these three hours. And in your local branch school, go to class. You got a variety of speakers, as you heard today and yesterday. And each one of them presents something other than what's being said today. And when it's said to you, you get a chance to examine it a little bit closer than what you would do on a normal. All right? 
This is just pretty much a synopsis, but to let you know that Yahweh down here at the close of this age, he's given us an understanding mm -hmm. that we might go in the ages to come learning of our Creator. All right? But not in these bodies. We have to die. They say, uh, don't you see God? That's what they say. But he's up here. And in and, 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 uh, the 24th chapter, this is what he had to say. 24, read the first verse. Because before, before anything could happen of them going to the mouth, it always had to be a death. Watch, watch this. Before when Yahweh had Israel take out this lamb, before Moses could go into this mouth, this lamb had to die. Is that right? <laughs> now, he's calling Moses back up into the mouth on the 24th chapter, read the first verse. And he said unto Moses, said this to Moses, come up unto Yahweh. He said, now, look, now he's coming up into the mouth. He said, come up unto Yahweh. Thou and Aaron and Nadab and Abihu. Now you read Aaron, which is an elder. Nadab and Abihu, which are two brothers. Is that right? Read. And 70 of the elders of Israel. And you bring up 70 of the elders of Israel, too. And worship me afar off. Now he's telling these 73 to worship afar off. Is that right? Then he tells them, read on. And Moses alone. Now Moses alone come on up right near me. Read. But they shall not come near God. So that more advanced soul, which is Moses, could go on up further into the top of this mountain. But they were to tarry here at the plateau of this mountain. And the children of Israel that were out in the wilderness couldn't even touch the mountain. Read. Neither shall the people go up with him. Read. And Moses came and told the people all the words of Yahweh. Came and told them what Yahweh said. Is that right? Read. And all the judgments and all the people answered with one voice and said, all the words which Yahweh has said will be do. Okay, now you go back in the 19th chapter, you see they had uh, Moses built an altar and they had an altar of sacrifice. Okay? You have to read that. Then you'll find out in the 9th and 10th verse that then went up Moses and Aaron, they down the Bible and the 70 elders of Israel, and they and they saw this super incorporeal shape and form. They seen a body of heaven in his clearance. Now, when Yahweh gets Moses up into, in his mouth and showing him <clears throat> this super incorporeal shape and form, see, their vision after seeing this form was cut off. Moses alone go on to see how Yahweh Elohim changed it into this uh, threefold tabernacle pattern. Right? Then he goes on to show him back in part. Now he's showing him the exterior of this pattern. Then he goes on to show him in part Yahweh Elohim and how he brought the creation out by Yahweh Elohim. Is that right? Or by Elohim. Is that right? Now he's seeing this come out by the pattern. He sees this pattern come out in threefold. One, two, three, just as he made this tabernacle pattern. And as the previous speakers went into how he brought forth the creation. Now Moses is up here looking at, for 40 days and 40 nights, how Yahweh brought forth the creation. You got Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and the 70 elders, their vision is cut off. So what they do, when their vision is cut off, they go on back down in the camp. Mm -hmm. But he brought them up into the mountain to see him. After they saw him, their vision was cut off. Yahweh goes on to show Moses how he brought forth the creation. That's why the account that you're getting in Genesis, the first chapter, at the top of your book. See, it's the first book of Moses called Genesis. But they didn't learn or didn't see that until the Exodus. Because this is when Yahweh revealed it with Moses, the Genesis. And as he's beginning to write about the beginning in Genesis, 
He said, in the beginning. Now Moses is sitting up in the mountain. Ain't that right? And he's seeing this creation. Y'all just tap the bell. It don't make no difference. You just tap the bell. See? <laughs> See? And you know what? We, we don't do that in a negative sense. But we have to let you know time is not on our side. See? And I appreciate when that happens. Now I'm going to get this out and show you that Moses is up here in there and he's writing creation and then show you how this book is put together. See, it's just like us telling a story. Ain't that right? And when we begin to tell a story, it says, in the beginning, y'all look, this Moses now. But watch how your book is put together. Do y'all understand what I'm talking about? Okay. See, now he's, in, he's up here in the mountain. And he's seen Yahweh up here brought for the creation. And he had to come back down and tell Israel what he saw and why he was up here now. Is that right? And he sees how Yahweh in the beginning, Yahweh uh, 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 created the heavens and the earth, right? And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. Is that right? And it said that the spirit, as the previous people said, the spirit of Yahweh moved upon the face of the water. See, and then it says, and, right? And you know, was he doing? He was playing seeds, is that right? So I see, now look, the whole creation is inundated at this time with water. Right? So now with it being inundated in water, you got Yahweh planting seeds. He's planting seeds. Read. Now, we're just going to go over the conversation because I got five. I'm going to try to tie this on in real time. Third verse, and Yahweh said, let there be light. Let there be light. And there was light. And go to the next verse. And Yahweh saw. See how he's telling that story? And, and, and. Y'all know how y'all talk about the Game of Thrones or 24 or, or Days of Our Lives. <laughs> Ain't that right? And we're waiting on the next chapter of Ghosts. Ain't that right? <laughs> Shut up. Tell the truth. <laughs> this is a school. You're still natural people. You still love ice cream, don't you? <laughs> but we can tell because it grows on us. <laughs> you understand me? See? So, 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 you know, and people say, you, you, you ain't got nothing to look at a TV. We have some television. <laughs> See? And Moses up there in his mouth, and he's seeing his thing. But anyways, it goes and 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 the evening of the and the evening in the morning was the seventh day. So Yahweh Elohim did what? Finish his work. Is that right? Now look, that was the covenant that Yahweh had been given to Israel out here while they were uh, uh, in this wilderness. Is that right? Now watch, watch. It's a covenant that Yahweh gave. Right? Now he goes down because y'all have did this to me. And Dr. Neil took up my time. <laughs> <laughs> and y'all sit right here and there. <laughs> and I didn't care if you didn't ring the bell. It doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. As long as somebody, y'all be using to tell the truth. Or to get into this teaching. You see all these charts here? Man, we put a, a person up on every last one of these charts. You can tell the story. Here. On every last one of these charts, y'all can believe within yeah. themselves. Yeah. Every last, and every story in your Bible is complete within itself. Yeah. All you got to do is start at the beginning of the first verse. Is that right? So now you go to Jeremiah 31. Uh, 31. I'm just moving on. Because yeah. Israel had them broke his law. Because that's what the uh, previous speaker told him. They broke that covenant. Is that right? And Moses showed forth that because he came down out of Mount Sinai out of the table was stones in the head and he broke them beneath this mouth. This is the cut up version of it. But it came to the point where it said, Behold, the day is come. Is that right? Now that's about 600. Uh, 606 uh, years before the birth of Yahshua. Is that not right? See? Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh. Now, this is way back 1,500 years. 600 and some years done passed. So now it's down to the, coming to the birth of Yahshua, you got about 606 years. Read. That I will make a new covenant. Behold, look, the days come, saith Yahweh. 
The same one that gave the covenant back here, spoke it from the top of the mountain, is the self same one that after Emperor had went a whoring after other gods and he split them up. He had ten tribes to go with Jeroboam and he had two tribes to go with Rehoboam. But he's telling them in the middle of the book that behold the days come, said Yahweh, that I'm going to make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of, and with the house of Judah. Watch now, watch this. He's going to make a scripture rule. Read. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers. Now here's the covenant that he made with their fathers. In the day that I took them by the hand. This one was with gifts and sacrifices that had to be brought to the high priest. This new covenant is not going to be like that covenant. This was a natural law mm -hmm. given to them to perform. But when he come here now, he turned into a spiritual law. There's spiritual sacrifices. Not that sacrifice that stop, but there's a spiritual offering now. It's an inward thing now. But this was given, and it's important to know that this was given to the Jews. Would I be too much for two five more minutes? Five more minutes, just give me five. Read. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand. To bring them out of the land of Egypt. This is your story, because I'm going elsewhere. I read. Which my covenant made break. Mm -hmm. Although I was a husband unto them, saith Yahweh. He was a husband, right? So we let you know that Yahweh did marry her, right? Yes. Is that right? Yes. Now he and Yahshua come in 1,500 years from this time, and this woman he was called an adultery. Is that right? <laughs> How about when Yahshua come over to fulfill the law and the prophets as a first speaker said, there was a woman called an adultery. Ain't that right? Then you got Yahshua or the scribes and the Pharisees, all the religious leaders, they gonna bring the woman unto Yahshua and set her in the midst. And when they set her in the midst, this is the same place that Israel was set in the midst, in the midst of, of, of the mount. Is that right? Or in the wilderness? Is that right? Read. Hey, oh, that's over the John 8 and 1. Read. Yahshua went into the Mount of Olives. Went into the Mount of Olives. There's a mountain back here. I'm sorry, God. Read. And early in the morning. Early in the morning. And he came again into the temple. Came into the temple. And all the people came unto him. Read. And he sat down and talked to him. He sat down and he started teaching. Just as he spoke back right there. He's teaching them. Don't do this. Don't do that. <laughs> right? It's death to you. Read. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. They got something. The scribes and the Pharisees, they out there lurking. That's what the devil does. <laughs> he got an engineer. in the air. Looking around in the darkness trying to find out something. So they catch a woman. They don't look in the window. I'm using the word. Look in the window. Uh huh. Hold up. She's in the very act. You know what they do, right? You gotta grab up. You come on over here. We're gonna see what he has to say about it. Because we know what Moses said in the law. The law said that she should be stoned. Ain't that right? That's what the law says. Yes. And we, since you say you Yahshua, we want to know what you got to say about it. Right? They tested him. Read the And when they had set her in the midst. They set her right in the midst, just like they got that tabernacle and got the uh, tribes around there. Is that right? Read. They said unto him, Rabbi, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Uh huh. Now Moses in the law. This is a woman sitting in the chair. I'm gonna move in a minute. Read. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should. You be see how people have thrown the law in your face? <laughs> but what says that? What would you got to say about it? They check it in now. What you got to say? You know, you always got people coming up. They think they wanna. They where well, they wanna challenge you. Yeah. 
Go ahead. Read. This they said, testing him. What they were testing? Read, read. That they might have to accuse him. Oh, then Yahshua stooped down. Hold it now. Look now. And I, I didn't let them tell you this, but you go back and read it. These were saying stuff that was written. And when they were written, they were written up in the mouth with the fellow with the a finger of hell him. Is that right? Now here it is. They tested him, the one that gave the law. That no one said it. No one was against them. Contrary to it. But he stooped down and with this thing that he did what? He wrote on the ground. What you think he wrote? Just what he written in the law because he can't change it. <coughs> Thou shall not commit adultery. Ain't that right? Yep. He did it the first time. They broke it, right? But he did it the second time because he don't change it. But when they continued asking him. Well, when they continued asking him. He lifted up himself and said unto them. He that is without sin among you, let him be the first to cast a stone at her. Now she went right there, but I ain't even need a second time. But anyways, he wrote two times in, 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 in saying, is that right? See, now he wrote the two times, huh? He said that again. Okay, all right. He stooped down. Stooped down. And wrote on the ground. Wrote on the ground. And they which heard it. Heard it. Being convicted by their own conscience. Now what happened? You forgot, you forgot to offer up your sacrifice. Now you in trouble. You look in somebody's window. You got all your sacrifice, right? Now you got to run. From the oldest all the way down. You know what y'all need to quit. <laughs> anyway, the day of Pentecost come on down. And that law was changed. And that's what the scripture was when the day of Pentecost was fully come. While they were in one accord, one place, suddenly there came a sound from heaven. And it was rushing by the wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. Ain't that right? And it was cloven tongue, black air with fire. And it said, rested on each other. Ain't that right? And when they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, they began to speak with other tongues. That was the new one that Jeremiah prophesied of in the 31st chapter. That he was going to give them a new heart and a new spirit. What was he going to put within him? Uh, in other words, he was going to change that. The law still existed, but it was from a natural to a spiritual. Our theme song is, you take the natural, it points to the spirit. Long time ago, you take the natural to understand the spirit. Either one you say it's all right. Either one. But then, I want you to read one thing. I want you to read Romans 8, chapter. Because I want to let you know that over here now, Things done change. And Paul is the one that was knocked off his donkey. Ain't that right? Mm -hmm. See? And most of the time when he preached, he preached to the Jew. I mean to the Gentile. Mm -hmm. Because the Jews had a problem. <laughs> they were still scared of Paul. Mm -hmm. And then they say some of the things that Paul said. They were just hard. He understood. <laughs> so Paul, what he did is he went to the Gentile. Mm -hmm. Ephesus, ain't that right? Mm -hmm. Corinth, Rome, ain't that right? That's where he went. He talked to the Jews also. But he went on around and he started talking to the rest of them. This is what he said. Romans 8 and I think what I, what I told you, what, 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 8 and what? 2? Read. Romans 8 and 2. I just couldn't remember this for nothing in my life this morning. Read. For the law of the spirit of life. Now we got a law of the what? Spirit. Don't play with me. So any of you run right and think you can do anything. There's another law now that's got you. Mm. And you know what? That one's worse than that other. Because in that one, you can take physical sacrifices and get them to call me. But if this one goes on within you, mm. and it condemns you, for the law of the Spirit now in this age has made me free from what? Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. LSD. A lot of people are not into the fentanyl. Ain't that right? They're lacing the drugs with fentanyl. That's the wrong one. We got one down here, boy. That here was lost in death. Ain't that right? But the law of the Spirit has made me free from the law of sin and death. Y'all come on back to class here. And when you get home, go to class. 
and stop making up excuses. The devil keep you out. But he come to pray. And you know when he come to pray, you know what he do? Raise hell. <laughs> and you know what? We're going to fight a little bit. Because Israel always had the war. But I tell you this right here. As deans, we all going to set up a meeting. All of us going to come together. I think it's time that all of us deans come together. We need to have a little talk. Maybe it's because of the lack of understanding of some things that are said and has been said that we don't quite understand. And maybe we can fellowship with our brother and get some of this stuff sorted out. And you know how we're going to have to do it? We're going to have to go to the law and to the testimony. Other than that, you're sounding brass and a tingling stumble. All right? And we're going to have to use the resources that we've been given. And may Yahweh bless us and keep us until we see each other again in the flesh. And in the spirit, we also got fun. We can make calls and talk to each other. Let's talk these things out. But ain't no need to come and thinking that you got the whole show sitting up in you. It don't work like that. All of us are helpless one to another. Don't forget. Peace. Peace. Peace.